okay? The wealth of a person and that person is a deceased person. It means that a person who has passed away. So here you say that uh, there are two things that you cannot uh, run away. One is death, the other one is tax. So that's why uh, even after you have passed away, all right, you still have to pay taxes. So, but of course, uh, because you already dead, so you need someone to pay tax on your behalf. Yeah. You need someone to pay tax on your behalf. So that's that person is what we call executor. Yeah. Executor. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, these are some of the terms that we are going through under this topic. We have the tax administration for the estate. All right, we have administration of the estate. Administration period means that how long the administration of the estate will take. And then what are the responsibility of the executor? And how are you actually going to assess the estates? And we are going to look into the detail of the tax computation under this term, estate, and then how to determine the chargeable income as well as how to determine the rates of taxes. <clears throat> right. So, estate I mentioned earlier, estate is a wealth a person beneficially owns at the time of death. So, now you have to remember that what you are doing now is that you are looking at the, the wealth of a person who has passed away. And then how you're going to determine the tax liability of that person for that particular year of assessment and the year following. Yeah. And then when talk about test state, so when a person during his life, you can actually write down a will. All right. A will is what we call a wasiat. Okay. And if you left behind a will, and that will is valid, yeah, on the estate then you are said to test it, all right? Uh, under the will, you must have to appoint a person to handle the, your wealth. So that person is called executor. Yeah, that person is called executor. So what we are doing now is that we are going to compute the, for example, during a year of assessment, a person passed away on 30th of June. Right, so during, for example, we say that YA 2019, a person passed away on 30th of June 2019. So you have to compute the tax liability of that person. One is that from the period 1st January 2019, the other one is uh, uh, sorry, 1st January 2019 to date of death, which is 30th of June 2019, because this is the period during your. Uh, your wealth. Uh, during, this is the period that you are actually living. But from the period from 1st of July to 31st of December 2019, your executor has to submit the form. Your executor has to determine how much of the tax liability of that person for that period, assuming that the income still arises during that period. All right? We're talking about income during life after death. <laughs> yeah. You are not referring to employment income because what employment income once you have passed away, then the income is no longer exist. But remember that a person can leave behind a business income. A person can leave behind a dividend income, interest income, or even rental income under his name. So for that, during that year, you still have to submit tax returns on his name. And the person responsible is the executor. Okay? So... What we are looking at now is that if you left behind a will, all right, mentioning how much uh, wealth that could be distributed to the beneficiaries, on top of that, you name a person to handle the estate, that person is what we call executor. Okay? But if you left behind, if you don't have any will, right, and many of us actually intend to leave behind a will, but didn't get the chance to leave a will. Yeah, we always plan to plan. Plan to write a will, 
but we never materialize the plan. Okay, so when there is no will, means that there's no person appointed to handle the well. All right, remember that we are talking about the will here, all right, whether it's a Muslim or non Muslim. It's, yeah, sometimes we say that, okay, will that you have to apportion how much wealth wanted to first son or half. So all this is the, uh, is the allocation. But the more important is who to handle the, the wealth. All right. So if you, you left behind intestate, it means that there's no will. Or even if there is a will, but the will is invalid. Then, all right, the court will have to appoint an executor. And appointment of executor under the court, what we call administrator. Yeah. Either way, whether it's an executor or it's an administrator, the responsibility is the same. To submit the tax returns of the deceased person, all right, until certain period of time. Yeah, later we'll see how long are you going to uh, administer the wealth. Right, but and then uh, if there is no will for a non Muslim, all right, you will have to follow the distribution of the wealth or the distribution of the estate in accordance with the Distribution Amendment Act 1997. All right, if you look at um, uh, sorry, yeah, let me see where is it. Uh, I want to have a new share, okay. So you look at on the textbook, you see that the administrator for a non-Muslim, they already have a law saying that the Distribution Amendment Act 1997, where for example, if you leave behind parents only, then parents will get 100%. But you only have spouse only, then spouse get 100%. Similarly, if you only have children only, children get everything. All right? But if you left parents and spouse, that is 50-50. Spouse and children one third to third, but you have parents, spouse and children 25, 25, and 50%. Right? So this is for non-Muslim. If you do not leave behind a will, you have to follow this. But if you leave behind a will, then they will follow the will, provided that the will is a valid will. Yeah. If you have any question during my lecture, I would love it if you can just all right. Just unmute and ask the question immediately. So far, how are you doing? <laughs> are you following? Yes, yes, doctor. Doctor. yes, doctor. yes doctor. we're doing good. Yes. <laughs> are you landing or you're sitting down or what? My, do my son, during his online class, 11, 13 years old, he just land, you know, bare and then pegang handphone. I don't know now what he learned. By the way, this is my first online class. How am I doing so far? You're doing so good at the... <laughs> good. So far so good at the... Very good. If I'm not clear, you just stop me and ask questions immediately. Yeah? Because this is only on the second page. Yeah? All right. But for Muslim, all right, the law is different because we do have the... What do you call that? Fara'id. Have you heard of that? A fara'id whereby if you leave behind a children or you have a wife, then there's a, a, a special allocation on terms of the percentage, all right? The, it's not percentage, the one eight or one six, half, or depending on the situation. So as a Muslim, by right, you have to follow the fara'id. But if you leave behind a will, then you can follow the will, right? Provided that all the beneficiaries agree to the will, right? For example, assuming that under the Fara'id, assuming, yeah, I'm just giving you an example, under the Fara'id law, the wife should get one eight, for example, right? But under the will, the husband left behind 50% of the wealth to the wife and the balance 50% to the children. Nothing to the parents, for example, if the husband still have the parent, parents still have their, their rights on the, on the estate. So assuming that now, we, the, the will only say that 50% for the wife, 50% for the children, right? But the Farah 8 says otherwise. 
So if the beneficiaries, in this case, who are the beneficiaries? The wife, the children, and the, the parents. If they agree to the will, then you can follow the will. But if any of the beneficiaries disagree to the will, then you have to go back to Fari'i. Is that clear? So that is a Muslim law. Yeah? But for non-Muslim, then you have to follow that distribution act if you do not have any will. If you have the will, then you can follow the will 100%. Yeah, okay. So that is on the distribution of the estate. Okay. So what are the responsibility of the executor? Uh, new share, I want to share this one. Okay. Executor, again, is the person right, appointed under the will or by the court to manage or to administer the estate of the deceased person. Okay, next, in terms of the administration, all right, remember that we have two periods in the year of death. One is the period during the life. Right, in this case, example is that from 1st January 2019, which is last year, yeah, and, now, and then up to 30th of June 2019. So for that period, then the executor, of course, because you are, when do you submit this form? Form B for 2019? Form B or Form BE? But I assume it must be Form BE. Why? What's the difference from B and from BE? Employment and business. Okay. For BE? BE for employment only. Yeah, very good lah you all need. Okay. Form BE means that you have employment income only. So in that case, if you are there, then your income until 30th of June only lah. So you must get someone. Even though in that case, you only have employment income, right? You must have someone and this someone must be the executor. So the, the importance of having a will or to write in your wasiyat, it's not about the allocation, right? Sebab kalau you tak buat allocation pun tak apa, it's okay because for Muslim you have to follow Farah right? Kalau non Muslim you follow the distribution act unless you disagree with that, okay? But the more important thing about writing down a wasiyat or a will is the appointment of the administrator. So many, many, many Malaysians have wrong understanding. They thought that writing a will is more important, it's about the allocation and they don't want to allocate like that, right? But the more important is how, who to handle your, your estate, yeah? So it means that if you die 30th of June 2019, the Form B has to be submitted by 30th April 2020, the following year, isn't it? So assuming there's no MCO, there's no COVID-19, you can have to submit by 30th of April 2020. So, of course, you can't submit yourself. So, you have to get someone. So, in this case, the executor have to submit the form B by 30th of April. So, you have to determine lah, the executor, we have to determine how much the income from 1st January to 30th of June, right? And then write it down in your form B, written form. But for the executor, income from 1st July to 31st of December, right? Then you will have that. Uh, 1st July to 31st of December 2019, that is under the executor's name, right? They call the form, it's no longer form B, but we call it as a form T, right? T maybe for trust. T maybe for trustee, I'm not sure, yeah? So the form is form T, all right? And then, of course, in the form, you have to write down the name and address of the beneficiaries, any income received by them during the year or distributed to them or applied of their beneficiary, whatever, right? You have to, in the form, you have all the executor's name, everything, yeah? So that is in terms of the administration. So means that for the period from July to 31st December will be under Form T, okay? But if for 2020, you have not settled yet with the estate, then the, the executor will continue to submit Form T for the following year or following years of assessment until everything's settled, okay? Why is it taking so long? If the wealth is not so much, it's okay. It will settle as soon as possible, yeah? But if there are so many complications, there's, the wealth is so, so much, there are so many persons who are interested in the wealth, right? 
and if they are then 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 have many whys for example or there are many issues then it will take long yeah we have many of the tycoons in malaysia all right has not yet settled all right they have to go in go out of the court to settle we get to their the wealth or the estate of that person okay so so that's why it takes longer yeah so in terms of administration so executor is only accessible and chargeable on it on income of the estate of the deceased so it means that executor when you submit the form is only on the of the deceased person income of the deceased person hold on yeah yeah i'm recording the i'm recording the the what the zoom uh, i forgot lah uh, ada seorang lagi tak masuk amiru lupa nak check okay dan anyone waiting okay. okay from zoom we have removed the 40 minute time limit of your group meeting. Wow, that's good, isn't it? So we can continue. I hope nobody goes to sleep yet. Okay. Okay, so executor is only accessible and chargeable of, on income. Okay, now for example, assuming that uh, from the income for the period from July to 31st December, there's a tax liability. Let's say tax liability of 10,000 ringgit. So where to get the money from? Is it the executor's money? No. Yeah. It has to come from the, the web, all right? It's tax payable, not personally by the executor, but out of the estate of the deceased, all right? So the executor means that he only manage. So if there is a tax liability, then we will take out from the estate, yeah, of the deceased person. So it's not from his pocket. However, all right? So in that case, um. Um, executed to provide for any income tax which is known to be payable or can be reasonably payable in the future, right? Before making distribution to the beneficiaries. So, so the, at the end of the day, what you want is that you want to distribute to the beneficiaries, either the wife or the children or include the parents. You want to distribute the estate to them, yeah? But before you distribute, you have to make sure that all tax liabilities and other liabilities. So the executor not only on the tax, but also on other liabilities has to settle first. All right, including tax liabilities, whether for the previous year, current year, as well as any foreseeable tax liability in the future. All right, have to put aside all this amount, then only distribute to the beneficiaries. Yeah, okay. What if fail? Means that if the executor fail, to estimate or to prov um, to to come up with a foreseeable tax payable in the future, but the money has been distributed everything. The estate has been distributed to beneficiaries. So that case, all right, the penalty would be on the executor. He has to come up with the amount to pay for the tax liability. Why? Because that is his responsibility to make sure that everything settled before distribution. If you have distributed, you can't ask from the beneficiary to give back and then so that you can settle. No. So that's your fault. Then the penalty is on you. All right. So they will impose whatever it is on the executor for the reason of loss to the government. So we can't have that. So you have to pay. Yeah. The executor has to pay. So because of that, before distribution, make sure that everything is settled. Yeah. So that's why sometimes it takes years before estate distributed to beneficiaries yeah okay so uh, that's why now we have a few companies for example the trustees company who actually manage are uh, being a trustee right be appointed as administrator or executor so for example in my case all right i write down a wasiyat and then i have a company for example in my case i have salihin yeah a salihin trustee all right if anything happened to me, so Salin trustee will handle everything. So remember that they are professional. So they know what are their responsibility. They know uh, the things that they have to go through everything, right? So it's under the good hand, inshallah. Yeah. 
but if you you can also appoint an individual, but remember that it's not easy. For example, if you want to, if you like behind even a house or a land, for example, you have to go to the to the uh, land authority. You know, you have to go to the uh, small court, lah, high court, whatever, lah. Right? It's not easy. It's not easy. So that's why. I prefer to appoint, I write down my wasiat and appoint a professional to handle my estate. Yeah. Uh, and remember that uh, I don't have many left behind, but even that small things, right, that you left behind uh, could be a burden to the beneficiary. So do what is right. Okay. Okay. When is the administration period of the executor? All right. You start from the date of death, which is one. Then just now, uh, died on 30th of June 2019 means that it start on 1st of July 2019 ends on the date when the executor is in a position to define the residue of the estate for distribution to the beneficiary. So it may take one year, it could be more than that. Yeah, until you can define the residue. No more liabilities, everything settled, all the hutang-hutang settled, yeah, all right then only you can distribute to the beneficiaries, right? In other cases, all right, rather than you distribute to the beneficiaries, what they do is that, um, in this case, it's that statement that they leave behind a will, saying that if anything happened to me, all right, this income, all right, you create a trust, all right? Create a trust rather than you distribute everything to the beneficiaries, create a trust, and income from the trust will be distributed to beneficiaries on a periodical period, right? It means that it could be an annually, it could be a monthly distribution. And that distribution is actually come from the income of the estate, right? For example, the estate has many houses, which is rented out. So income from this estate is a rental income, right? So rather than you give all the houses to the beneficiaries, so what you can do is that you continue, or right, the executor or the administrator will continue in this case we call it as a trust, then as the trustee. So trustee will continue to manage the estate or the wealth. All right, means that continue to rent out the, the, the houses and then you have rental income and that income from the trust distribute to your beneficiaries. So that is a topic that we are going to cover that in the following week, trust, yeah? So it's, uh, it's, it's more complicated because the wealth is still there. But in the case of estate, all right, once you settle, you distribute to beneficiaries a base. All right? You don't have to move. Okay? So, but remember, right, the income comprising the residue will be distributed to the beneficiaries as a capital in nature. Means that when you distribute everything to the beneficiaries, to the beneficiary, it's not an income. It's a capital in nature. Capital income. Means that it's not taxable. Alright, again. If you distribute everything to the beneficiaries from the estate by the executor, income of the beneficiaries is capital in nature, therefore it's not taxable. But if you have created a trust later, then you distribute the income of the trust to the beneficiaries. That is taxable. Okay. Doctor, huh? doctor, sorry, sorry. Ada someone request to enter the room. Oh yeah, ke? Uh -uh. Oh, oh lah, dua orang ni ha, kesian dia. Redaus dengan Iman Suhaimi. Yang kali datang cepat sikit. Ada tak? Okay kot. Eh, ada su. Alright. 63 dah. Eh, student ada 60? Ada dua orang lagi lah ni. Okay, nanti cakap eh kalau ada lagi yang menunggu. Alright. Okay, what is the responsibility of the executor macam dah cover je tadi? Ah, uh, ascertain the wealth of the deceased person. Okay, remember bila you cakap pasal from income tax perspective, wealth tu datang daripada mana? Yang taxable ni is actually from your section 4 lah. What are the income? Business income, section 4A. Employment income, section 4B. Okay? Section 4C apa? 4C, 
dividend interest and discount 4D RRP rental royalty and premiums section 4E PAP pension annuity and periodical payments and section 4F others so that is from the income tax perspective lah so these are the income which is taxable so you have to determine what are the income of the deceased person and then you have to settle any liabilities, including. So it means that other liability yang lain juga. Maybe you have to pay, ada hutang orang ke, you have to pay to someone else, right? Or you have to pay to the bank, for example, for your credit card. Or any other liabilities lah, which is not settled or which is not covered by insurance, then you have to settle first, yeah? And then what else? Then distribute to the beneficiaries, yeah, accordingly. How to distribute? Then it goes lah. Whether ada tested ke, intested ke. Right, ikut will ke, tak ikut will ke, ikut para aid ke, ikut distribution act. So that's the option. Okay. So assessment of the estate. Macam mana nak kira? Right. You have to compute the charge per income lah. Yeah. Charge per income. So remember estate ni estate orang yang mati. So you have to have two lah. Satu is the deceased person. Satu is the executor. So you have to determine the charge per income. So formula dia sama je lah macam all this one. What you do is that, apa yang you ada? Ha, cuba cakap kat I. Oh, keluar ni. Apa you ada? You ada section 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, 4E and 4A. Ya, yeah? you have your business income. Employment income means that until the date of death. Right, and then you have your DID, RRP, PAP. Pernah dengar tak benda tu? Alright, section 4C is for your DID. Dividend, interest and discount. Mana ni? Okay. Uh, section 4D is your RRP, which is rental, royalty and premiums. Section E is your PAP, which is your pension, annuity and periodical payments. And F, you have all your... Others. So this one is your business and this one is your employment. Okay, same. Right, you have to determine income from each source. So once you have that, then you have your, once you have your aggregate income. Ingat tak ni? Pernah dengar tak aggregate income? Hmm. Eh? Aggregate income, then you minus your current year losses. Eh, anak air. Tak mahu pun. Tapi, jangan tengok pasir rumah. Ha. Sibuk eh. Sekarang ni loss. Alright, so. So, sama je. Formula dia sama. And remember that, your computing ni individu ke company? Individu. Ha, individu. So, kena go back lah. Individu makna total income, aggregate income, total income. Lepas tu ada relief kan? So untuk yang deceased person tu, relief tu you ada banyak relief. So maybe you ada relief for your personal relief. Ha, ni mesti you tax one ni. Your personal relief, kalau ada wife relief, ada children relief, ada beli buku ke, lifestyle ke, insurance ke, all this relief, you are entitled to. Yeah? And you don't have to apportion half. Sebab hidup setengah tahun je, no. You don't have to apportion your relief. If you are entitled, everything is given to you. So katalah anak you ada seorang dua ribu. So you dapat dua ribu lah. Tak ada dah dapat dua ribu kali satu per enam. Uh, sorry. Enam per dua belas. Sebab hidup enam per bulan enam je. No. Alright. You are given everything. So for that individu, alright. You are going to get compute. Dia punya relief everything. Then come to chargeable income. Executor. Later we look at how to compute the tax comp for the executor. Sama je. Ya. Yeah? Executor is accessible and chargeable to tax on chargeable income of the deceased for the basis year in which he died, which is 2019. For the succeeding year, 2020, katalah tak distribute lagi. And for the previous years, if any. Ada juga kita ada kes banyak orang yang tak settle tax liability of the previous years. Tak submit lah apa. So, bila you mati, orang lain kena susah-susah settle kali ni tax liability. So might as well, alright, because you are, you are, I believe that most of you are graduating students, right? Once you start working, immediately submit your income tax return form for the first year. I believe it could be that your chargeable income is zero, tax liability is zero. 
Yeah, very minimal. But submit your written form. Right, start clear. And then when you submit, remember that it's under self-assessment system. So all the documents too, you can simpan. You tak payah submit. Right, you simpan. You ada satu file besar untuk tax filing. So you buatlah ikut tahun. Okay, 2020, 2021, 2023 onwards lah. So for 2020, what are the documents that you have, the relief that you claim especially. Alright, everything you must put that in the file. Ada juga sekarang ni dah rajin sikit buat scan everything, put that into a cloud system, whatever lah. But you must have that. Because why? Audit can come in anytime. Alright, even the submit sekarang, 5 tahun lagi dia boleh datang lagi. Because why? The time bar is 7 years. Yeah, so keep all the documents. So, katalah you mati. Yeah, executor tahu. Senang executor nak buat kerja sebab your documents are in place. It's very important that remember that kita hidup ni jangan menyusahkan orang. Right? Kalau masa hidup pun jangan susahkan orang. Dah mati pun jangan susahkan orang. So put things in place so that easier for people to to, to help you lah. Yeah? Right. Okay. So that is on the assessment of the estate. Okay. So you see here that uh, tax computation for the deceased individual Alright, uh, and then all the relief is available and no apportionment. Again, katalah uh, medical insurance boleh claim 3,000, claim 3,000. Tak payahlah nak claim 3,000 kali setengah. Because why? Hidup setengah tahun je. No, no apportionment of your relief. Okay. Executor, alright, as mentioned earlier, date of death until 31 December and succeeding years. Executor ada relief tak? Yes, relief of uh, I rasa it's no longer 8,000, it should be uh, yeah. It should be Apa yang buat ni? Sekejap ya, yeah. it should be 9,000 Right, 9,000 sekarang ni relief, personal relief is 9,000 per person Ya yeah. If domicile in Malaysia, nampak tak domicile tu? What is domicile? Any idea? Pernah dengar perkataan domicile? I still, I pun kalau tak buat estate ni, I tak pernah dengar perkataan domicile. Right, so what is domicile? Uh, domicile of a person, it means that it uh, defined as the country in which the person or the deceased person in this case has his permanent place. Yeah, has a permanent place of living. Right. The country in which the person has been habitually and permanently present. So, katalah, and that person has the intention to reside in that country permanently. Katalah, in my case, I'm a Malaysian. I have been habitually right, residing in Malaysia. So, tak ada masalah lah. I memang domicile in Malaysia lah. Yeah. But we also have people, actually, a Malaysian, tapi dia duduk dekat Australia. Many, yeah. Australia ke, Singapore ke, outside Malaysia. And they have been living in that country uh, habitually or permanently. So, dia balik Malaysia, cuti-cuti je lah balik Malaysia lah. So, COVID ni tak boleh lah kan? <laughs> boleh balik tapi kena quarantine 14 hari. Okay. So, if that person is living uh, live in Malaysia, then there's no issue of domiciliety. So, means that he died domiciled in Malaysia. Tapi katalah dia memang duduk Australia, right? And dia mati pun dekat Australia, then dia domicile outside Malaysia. Yeah. Or, katalah dia memang habitually live in Australia, and then dia balik Malaysia, dia mati kat Malaysia. Is he died domicile in Malaysia? Ha, in that case? Australia. Ha, Australia. Because why? Habitually or permanently, dia memang dekat Australia. Even though dia mati kat Malaysia, died domicile in outside Malaysia. Yeah. So that person has the intention to reside in that country, for example. So all this will determine the domiciliety of that person. Okay. So apa pentingnya domiciliety ni? Alright. Implication is that to the executor. Alright. Katalah dia died domiciled in Malaysia. Executor tu, once you determine the chargeable income. Remember individual income tax? Chargeable income, then you kena kira tax rate kan? Tax rate dia tu graduated scale rates. Ya, yeah, graduated. Okay, wait. Maknanya, 
uh, income banyak ni the first 10,000 contohlah eh, in, uh, income 100,000 so the first 70,000 how much and the balance at certain amount so that is what we call graduated scale rates and the executor will also be given a special relief of 9,000 ringgit irrespective of resident status of the executor it means that katalah executor tu is a non resident person Remember resident status, not resident, how you decide on the resident person in Malaysia? Section 7, all right, you have to look at the number of days in Malaysia. All right, for example, 181 days, kan? You have the 71A physical presence, 71B, 71C, 71D. So that determines the resident status. Kata lah executor ni is a non resident person, it doesn't matter. Because as an executor, kalau orang tu mati died domicile in Malaysia, executor will still get a relief of nine thousand ringgit. Yeah. Tapi kalau died domicile outside Malaysia, then there's no relief and the tax rate is flat rate twenty eight percent to the executor. Yang disease person tadi macam mana nak tahu nama dia punya tax rate? The deceased person. Biasa. Ha? Biasa Asal macam biasa. mana? Ha? 24. Ha? 24%. Apa tu? Itu company yang? Ha? Macam mana nak kira? The deceased person. Tengok table tu. Ha? Tengok table. Kenapa tengok table? Ikut income dia bracket lah apa tax bracket semua. Okey, kenapa nak tengok table? Apa menyebabkan dia boleh tengok table tak tengok tak tengok flat rate? Sebab kenapa kalau tak bagi orang bagi dia flat rate ke? Nah. Eh? Ha? Kenapa eh? Apa yang menentukan dia? Income Hello? dia. Tak. Residence. Residence dia. Ha? Residence. Resident apa? Resident, resident status. Haa, <laughs> baik ada. Resident status menentukan tax rate dia, flat rate ataupun graduated rate for the deceased person. Okay. So again, to the deceased person, resident status determine the tax rate. Whether graduated atau flat rate. To the executor, how do you decide on the tax rates? Satu, domisile, domisile, domisile. Ah, so kalau esok kita tengok domisiliti of the deceased person. Kalau dia di some domisile in Malaysia, then dia dapat graduate rates plus relief of nine thousand. Tapi dia tak ada, dia dapat relief lain lain. Nah, children semua semua tak ada. Eh. Wife relief ke tak ada? Nine thousand je relief dia. Alright, and then kalau domisile outside Malaysia, then the esok kita rate is twenty eight percent. Okay, terus. Okay, now kita dah 52 minit. Kita bagi 8 minit lagi. Hopefully boleh settle tak ni. Okay, so this is the summary lah. Ya, yeah, that we have gone through. Okay. Katalah, alright. Tadi ada will kan? Dalam will tu ada cakap, okay, katalah saya mati pay to my wife 3,000 ringgit per month from my estate. Okay. Dalam will ada mention pay annuity to my wife RM3,000 per month. So, executor kena bayar pada wife annuity. Ya. Yeah? So, kena bayar pada wife every month RM3,000. So, that is annuity. Remember section apa? Uh, annuity kat mana? Section PAP. 4. Ha. Oh. Belum balik balik ya. Eh, dah tak ada dah. E. Oh. For e. For e, PAP kan? Pension, annuity yes. and periodical payment. So, annuity tu pada siapa? Income tu taxable on home. Siapa yang dapat income annuity sekarang ni? Why? Why? So, tax is on Why? the wife. On the annuity received by the by the wife. From the estate. Yeah. yeah. Sebab annuity is a taxable income under section 4E. So, wife kena bayar lah annuity. Bila dia terima tu. Ya. Yeah? So katalah, remember that this one kita belum distribute lagi tau. We have not distribute to the beneficiaries. Tapi sebab dalam will ada kata bayar annuity, 
Dan dia kena bayar annuity lah every year, every month pada pada wife. Ya. Yeah. And that annuity is taxable. Therefore, wife kena bayar tax on the annuity received. However, effective from YA 1995, katalah what you do is that some receive by way of annuity granted under annuity contract issued by Malaysian life insurers are exempted from tax. Apa maksud dia? Katalah masa you hidup, right, you dah ambil insurance. You ambil insurance untuk bayar annuity pada your wife. So it means that katalah you mati, insurance company yang akan bayar annuity pada your wife or any of your beneficiaries lah. So in that case, rather than paying from your estate, dia akan bayar, insurance company akan bayar compensation tu. So tapi dia buat pada in terms of periodical payments, annual annuity namanya annual annual payment. That's nama annuity. Alright, it could be, it could be namanya annuity but it could be monthly juga. So katalah bayar, if you subscribe to that insurance, right, uh, contract means that that annuity that you receive, by the, the annuity received by the wife is not taxable. Ya, yeah. tapi kena buat kena bayar masa hidup lah. You bayar masa hidup, so bila you mati, company insurance yang bayar. So in that case, your wife pun tak payah bayar tax. So ni memang sayang betul lah kat wife ni. Ha? So you buat macam tu. Kita yang cakap kat my husband, so buat juga. Okay. Administration as well as estate. Alright. So katalah, do buat kerja do administer estate ni, is taxable, uh, is, is a lot. Alright. And sometimes, uh, most of the time lah. Alright, uh, the executor is paid out of the estate. Yeah, is paid out of the estate. Boleh bayar. Cumanya, bila you buat tax comp tu nanti, alright, the expenses paid to the executor is non-deductible expense. Kenapa? Sebab so, section 33.1 on what? Deductible expense or allowable expense means that in order for you to determine the adjusted income, you can deduct certain expenses. It has to be section 33.1, incurred wholly exclusively in the production of income. Yeah. So it means that sekarang ni, executor, bila you manage the this estate, income generated already. You dah ada business income, you dah ada employment income. So not in the production of the income, you manage the post production of income. Right, so that's why the the expenses is not deductible. Of course, you boleh bayar executor, tapi that payment is non deductible expense in arriving to your adjusted income. Yeah, uh, except kata lah executor tu memang manage the business of the person. Right, kata lah you ada business income section four A. And executor tu dia memang directly involved in the management or in the uh, you, know, you manage or operation of the business then the expenses paid to the executor for managing the business is deductible. Right? Managing the business, not managing the estate. Yeah? So make a difference this two lah. Right? And again, it's a based on uh, based on merit of the case. It's very subjective. So kata lah the expenses tu then you have to check dengan lembaga hasil is this really deductible or not? Yeah, kalau you can show it's directly incurred in the production of that business income, then the expense is deductible. Otherwise, it's not deductible. Okay. All right, last slide, right? Uh, distribution of income. Beneficiary would only be liable to test on annuity. Apa ni? Tak nampak Beneficiary, macam mana saya tak nampak muka saya sekarang? Saya nak saya. Pin video. Okay. Beneficiary would only be liable to test on annuity payment received from the executor. Remember tak tadi? Uh, payment katalah you bayar everything, you distribute everything to the beneficiaries is capital in nature. No tax. Except kalau you bayar annuity. So that annuity bayar from the estate taxable under section 4E on the recipient. Tapi katalah annuity paid by the insurance company again is exempted. Yeah, it's still taxable but it's, it's exempted. Alright. Other than annuity are mere gift and not income in nature therefore it's not taxable. Okay. So dah 58 minit. Almost one hour bercakap. Right. I'm going to give you a 10 minutes break. Alright, and then I will call you back. 
Nak 10 minit ke 15 minutes? 15 minutes lah eh. Eh. Kenapa dia nak minum minum pun? Okay lah, 15 minutes ya. So, during the break, what I want you to look, uh, I'm sure that um, tak ada nak pergi minum unless non-Muslim boleh pergi minum. Uh, I want you to look into the textbook and after we come back, after the break, we are going to look into the textbook. Okay, we are going to look into the examples and try, uh, try to do some of the questions in the example uh, to, for, to further understand the topic here lah, right? I think that once we have finished with all the example, then we should be able to do, we should be able to finish the topic lah for today, yeah? So, I'm um, closing it now temporarily, yeah? So, we'll come back later, maybe, I'm not sure whether I should give you a new Zoom ke, tak ke, I don't know, yeah? So, maybe I stop here lah, isn't it? How do I know? Or should I? Hmm.